Welcome to Indigenous Media Network News Bulletin. Today, the 4th of October 2021. First the headlines. Ethiopian Parliament has reappointed Abiy Ahmed as the country Prime Minister. Several heads of states and governments in Addis Ababa for Abiy Ahmed ceremony. A journalist in police custody in wake of Abiy Ahmed inauguration. Two police officers arrested over assault of a woman in Addis Ababa. A right group urge Abiy Ahmed to improve human rights situation. News in details. Ethiopia. Amid deadly Tigray conflict and allegations of worst famine in a decade, the Ethiopian parliament today has reappointed former Ethiopian security agent and Oromia Regional State Deputy President, Abiy Ahmed Ali, as the country head of government. His reappointment followed his landslide election victory for his Prosperity Party last June. Army Colonel and academic Dr. Abi Ahmed reappointment also came at a time the Ethiopian state is threatened by high inflation rate, high cost of living, unemployment, and pressure from Ethiopia's international counterparts, the USA, EU and the United Nations for threats of genocide and famine in Tigray region in the north. A country of long history of drought and famine, this worst famine in a decade, threatens the Ethiopian state fabric as the two communities at the core of the creation of Ethiopian empire are at loggerhead and battling deadly conflict over territorial claims. At the sessions of House of Federation and House of People's Representatives, the session reappointed Tagisi Chafo as the Speaker for the House of People's Representatives while the Hose of Federation appointed former Amhara Regional State President, Ajegnihu Teshagir, as the Speaker for the House of Federation. Similarly, both houses appointed Ms. Lomi Bido, former Oromia Regional State Speaker as the Deputy Speaker of the House of People's Representatives, and Mrs. Zura Ahmed, as Deputy Speaker of House of Federation. On the opening ceremony, the country president, Saal Workzewudi, in her speech stated, Despite divergent interest in the Horn of Africa and Middle East region, Ethiopian will not stand by events unfolding in the region, echoing the statement of former Ethiopian king, Menelik II during the colonial scramble for Africa, which led to modern Ethiopian international political map. The public in colorful costumes and Ethiopian multiple flags joined the celebration and congregated at Mescal Square to celebrate the first government of Prosperity Party. The ceremony was attended by several African heads of governments and states, including South Sudan, Somalia, Senegal, Nigeria, etc. But not its northern neighbor, Sudan with which it is in dispute over fertile agriculture borderland in addition to Nile water share. Salva Kerr and Uhuru Kenyatta are among African leaders in Addis Ababa to attend the swearing-in of Abiy Ahmed who was elected in an election that observers say fall short of international credibility. Although number of opposition political parties participated at June election, the outcomes were disappointing. Only a handful opposition candidates managed to win in their constituencies. None of the main opposition parties' top leaders failed to secure seats in their constituencies. The war in its 11th months between controversial Nobel Peace Prize laureate, Abi Ahmed and his former bosses who retreated to Tigray following his appointment to the office in April 2018, has claimed thousands lives and displaced hundreds of thousands internally and across Ethiopia-Sudan border. Nonetheless, since the conflict broke out in northern Tigray, opposition voices have been muted, with many doubting the difference between the ruling and the opposition groups. Since Abiy Ahmed assumed power in 2018, conflicts have been the hallmarks of his leadership. While the Tigray conflict now on the international agenda for grime atrocities against civilians, other violent conflicts remained underdogs. The Gumuz community, in the Benishangal Gumuz regional state, an indigenous people's territory, are victims of widespread human rights abuses and are displaced from their traditional homes by national extremist forces loyal to its northern neighboring region. Last week, Ethiopia dispelled senior UN officials that it's argued was on the ground of persona non grata, a diplomatic treatment between receiving and sending states. The Prime Minister, who is with a mandate to serve five years' term of office, expected to nominate and present his cabinets to the parliament for approval. Since the introduction of the Ethiopian Federation, the two Nilotic regional states, the Gambela and Benishangal Gumus, have been excluded from cabinet office, a key decision body of the Ethiopian nation state. On another development, in the wake of Abiy Ahmed inauguration, the police disclosed the whereabout of a missing journalist. Tesfilam Waldis, a renowned journalist and founder of Ethiopian Insider, was reported missing by family and friends after reporting a popular Oromo festival on 1 October 2021. 
Now in police custody, Tesfilam was last seen at Oromo Recha Festival where he reported a popular festival that turned out to be a protest against Abi Ahmed leadership, calling for his release of his opponents, including Jor Mohammed and Bekele Garbar. Similarly, two police officers who assaulted a woman in front of her toddler and other children standing were arrested in Addis Ababa. The social media video arose anger and criticism, which many viewed as failure of authorities to hold law enforcement officers accountable for breaches of human rights. On another development, an international rights group, Amnesty International, has called upon the Ethiopian Prime Minister to improve the human rights situation in the country. A researcher with the organization, Fisahate Kale, said that Abiy Ahmed now elected to serve a term of five years, ought to use his mandate not only to investigate breaches of human rights committed during his last term of office and in the future, but also those committed in the past, notably during EPRDF era where the current prime minister was in charge of security unit. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel for more news and updates. Join us again in our next news bulletin.